Paul, you're here with me. It's been an interesting day. Second day in a row. We're, we were red. Now we're back to scratch again. Let's hold that thought, though. Hold that yep. thought. I want to go to Patrick here uh, right now. Patrick Tahana, as I mentioned, uh, head of petroleum analysis at GasBuddy.com. He's at GasBuddyGuy on Twitter. Uh, if you don't follow him and you're into energy markets, you need to follow him. What are you doing if you're not? Patrick, I know you're, you're busy. you got a lot going on right now. Thanks for coming out with us. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. If we can uh, get his uh, sound sounds camera. good, eh? Sounds good. Yep, yep. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Wanda Big Patrick on here to talk for a few minutes. Thanks for coming on, Patrick. Uh, so you're down in Texas, correct? Well, actually, I'm in Chicago, but you know everything's happening in Texas. It's, That's where our eyes are right now. Yeah. So just uh, just you know, give us uh, you know, the broad overview here, and then we can. We could talk about you know, crude oil prices, natural gas uh, prices, and of course the uh, the effect on gasoline prices. Uh, just give us uh, the top down view. Well, you know, you you look at uh, what's happening in Texas. What an extreme event to see such uh, bone chilling temperatures down there, and the impact it's having on Texas. Uh, you know, energy wise has been dramatic. Uh, you're talking about oil rigs that have been shut down; they're frozen over. Uh, refineries that have shut down uh, 20% of the nation's refining capacity offline now. Keep in mind, refineries are outside exposed to the elements. Uh, and uh, unlike the uh, refineries we see here in the North Country, um, where they are at least partially insulated, refineries down south are uh, exposed. And so uh, the, the freezing weather has caused uh, quite a few of them, about a dozen, to shut down. And of course, the ripple effect is that gas prices nationally are starting to tick higher. Um, so by and large, and then, it, you know, not even to get in the natural gas, you know, with all the electrical issues down there, uh, the, the spot price of natural gas surging to the point where some, uh, electricity producers are just shutting down. They don't want to have to buy it at such high spot levels. All right. Let me, uh, first go back to, uh, the refineries and everything. They, I mean, can they just flip a switch? I mean, do they have to wait for these things to thaw out? Is there going to be any uh, long-term damage or is it something that, you know, can bring, you know, when, mm -hmm. when do you see peak production coming back online? Yeah. You, you know, the, the weather is starting to warm up. Um, I'm looking at a, a temperature in Dallas right now of 29 degrees in Houston, just a little bit warmer. So we're on the cusp of being able to, uh, to see these temperatures return above freezing. Houston's actually closer to 40 degrees. So that's good news for refineries that they're thawing out. I would imagine that later this weekend, as temperatures uh, start to get closer to 50 and 60 degrees again, that these refiners will be able to get back online or at least start. Um, restart is not as easy as, as turning on a light switch, unfortunately. So it will be a delicate process that probably takes three to five, maybe seven days. The good news is there's not a whole lot of long-term damage. These were uh, able to shut down uh, in a safe mode. So that's good news, not a long-term impact, but still uh, price is going to be impacted simply because uh, gasoline production lost for almost uh, probably close to a week by the time refiners get back online. All right, so let's talk about uh, the price impact that it's had, uh, the potential impact moving forward, uh, and then how long do you think it's going to take things to uh, get back to normal? Well, the price impact, the national average is all, already up $0.03 cents a gallon from the start of the week. It could go up another uh, 7 to $0.17. Cents. We were calling for a $0.10 to $0.20 cent impact. And since we've already gotten $0.03, cents, you know, now doing the math, uh, call it 7 to $0.17 cents over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but as refineries get back online, we may see a little bit of a respite then uh, as we begin the month of March. But by by March, man, we are uh, you know we'll be close to to starting baseball season and spring weather will be here before you know it, and then we switch to summer blends of gasoline, which is going to have another pricing impact. So not much of a break. The national average on the oh. cusp of two sixty a gallon, and we'll probably keep going higher. Patrick, is this is this going to be a thing now that we're going to have to be aware of as far as risk factors for the natural gas and energy markets? Is this type of event happening again? Well, it's certainly, you know, this is the, the type of event that there's going to be investigations, there's going to be meetings, especially ERCOT, uh, which is the Texas regulator that, that you know, gets to monitor the grid. Now, it looks like a lot of that's come back online, but, you know, Texas is a mess right now, and perhaps rightfully so, a lot of upset citizens uh, who lost power longer than expected. There were rolling blackouts that went longer than expected, and they're still rotating blackouts. So there's a lot... 
uh, of things to be learned here. But don't expect necessarily every Texan and every refinery to go out and insulate themselves against a one in a maybe one in every 20 year cold weather event. Uh, so this is this ha- hasn't happened in, in 20 years. You know, I, I'm just kind of throwing exactly. okay. out. Okay. I don't even yeah. know. I don't ever remember. You know? <laughs> you heard it. He said it not for another 20 years. I just heard it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to bet on that, right? Guys, global warming, <laughs> it, it can't happen anytime soon again. You, you, um, you just know, said it, it certainly I, could. I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're sticking me to it there. Yeah. I know we got a, a few minutes uh, here with uh, Patrick DeHaan of uh, Gas Buddy at Gas Buddy on Twitter. Uh, Patrick, I just want to talk to you just about this rally in the oil market. I mean, uh, it seems like the whole world is going electric EVs. That's uh, where the world is moving and, you know, mm-hmm. different car companies, different mandates and when they're going to be all electric here. Uh, you know, this rally in crude. I mean, well, actually, we hit 62.29 today and we got a little bit of a reversal going. Uh, what What do you, tr- I mean, obviously oversold in February and March. What, what do you attribute? Attributing uh, the steep rise in, in, I mean, you've had the short-term catalyst uh, yeah. with the refineries coming offline, but you know, what do you what do you make of this rally? And then just looking at you know historical uh, crude oil prices, you know, where do you see them in six months, a year, you know, five years down the line? I know those Boy, are tough questions. Yeah, yeah, you know, let me get my dartboard out here. And okay, <laughs> get a little luckier, my my magic eight ball. Um, <laughs> You know, short term, like you said, it's been an impressive rally up from $35 a barrel on Halloween uh, to 62 earlier. Now we're back down to 60. But uh, by and large, this is a function of fundamentals. Um, demand has been recovering globally faster than production. And that's music to the, the ears of OPEC and to oil companies that were, were battered uh, last year with low oil prices. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a lag here. Uh, prices are going up. Demand is going up. Oil companies still cautious about bringing back jobs and production, you know, worried that what does the next chapter look like? So that's where we are. Supply is not recovered enough globally uh, to keep prices in check. And and I think that's where the rally is going now. Uh, Just I think yesterday I was reading a piece in the journal uh, that Saudi Arabia stands prepared to raise production for April. Not a surprise. They want to keep U.S. (laughs) oil producers from getting online if, if prices do get too hot. Uh, but, I, you know, we may be close to the end of the rally, at least temporarily, uh, with Saudi Arabia kind of throwing cold water on it, alluding to the fact that, hey, we got it, you know, the, that they'll increase production. We're on with Patrick Nahan. He is the head of petroleum analysis at Gas Buddy. Uh, Patrick, I don't know if you can answer this, and, and if you can, feel free to say so. But can you explain, like, so what what makes the, the uh, like Texas unique in this regard as far as, like, their grid do you, do you know anything about that or no not not so much frankly not so much okay it, it just you know i've been reading i'm I, i'm fascinated by by the texas electrical grid but it, it is apparently very unique to uh to our country and and decentralized and i'm i'm just fascinated by it because it's not like any other state but patrick dehan I, I mentioned he's it's up on the screen at gas buddy guy if you follow energy markets you follow oil and you don't follow him, you're doing it wrong. Uh, Patrick, thanks a lot for coming on with us. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. We'll get you back on again soon. Thank you, Patrick. All right. Let's uh, pick up where we usually uh, start the show. Uh, yeah. We had the dip, 38.80. Uh, quite a bit under the, the previous day's low, but we've bounced back here. And uh, we're at uh, 39.15. Uh, still red on the day, but not by much. Uh, we have an important levels. We're going into Friday and you now have them by Friday highs for the week or lows for the week. Pretty tight range so far. Uh, but you're going to have, you know, your, your Globex high from the day at uh, 36. You have that high from yesterday at 32 and a quarter. But more importantly, I look at these three closes that you had right around. Let me bring up the S&P here. Right around the old time closing high is 39.31. So that's my bogey for overnight. That's my bogey for tomorrow. See if we can get above that. It just seems like, you know, a, kind of a quiet week, three day week. We do have options expiration tomorrow, mm-hmm. a short four day week. So I did see that this expiration, there's like 570 
billion dollars worth of uh, options expiring, and it's one of the biggest expirations, non-triple which, that we've had. So uh, could be some fireworks. Be prepared for a big up or big down open tomorrow and see which way we go from there. As I mentioned, uh, crude got to 62.29, and then the Saudis came in and said, hey, We'll, we'll start pumping, and then that has turned it from a green day to a red day, uh, down a buck twenty-two at trading in the after hours, fifty-nine ninety-four. Uh, gold, man, new low for the move, but rebounded up a buck thirty at seventeen seventy-four ten, and then you have silver going the opposite way, down. Uh, down a quarter at 27.07 and Bitcoin quiet range for Bitcoin here. Buyers won't go away. Sellers won't go away. Uh, 53,080. Uh, that's your high. I believe that's the all time high here in Bitcoin and uh, you're low. You made a low above 50,000. Actually, what do you got here on the daily? We got a area to keep an eye on. Wow, tight range, but uh, keep an eye on your daily. 53,210, 53,080. Let's just call 53,000 major resistance. And the Bitcoin futures, I'm sure that correlates pretty closely uh, to the actual cryptocurrency on Coinbase. All right, Joel, have you been watching the, the stream today, the, the, the hearing at all? No. Did you get out of your GameStop? No, wait, pull up the GameStop chart because I want to. Yeah, okay, this, let's talk this is actually, about This it. is actually pretty funny. Um, So l look at the 15 minute chart on GameStop. You can actually see. So that, that midday spike, that, yeah. 12, that 12.45 spike, that, that happened as soon as uh, Roaring Kitty, uh, well, Keith Gill, a.k.a. Roaring Kitty, um, was being questioned uh, about what, like, would he own, would he still buy GameStop now? And he said, yes, he would still buy GameStop at $40. And that was that spike. And I was on with Luke and I was a little bit busy. And if I wasn't so busy, I, I guess it's not hard to open up my Weeble app and sell, but I didn't. So thank you very much, Luke Jacoby. I am underwater. My Weeble account is going to zero. Thanks a lot for that one, Luke. Um, did, I, he, uh, I, did Luke get out? <laughs> I, I don't know, but if he did, I'll. He owes me lunch or something. Yeah. Because... What did it? Uh, I just uh, one question on this. Did he say something about disclosing when he sold on the video? Was there any discussion uh, of that? You know what? I'll be honest. If there was, I missed it. Okay. Um, and and uh, he, he talked about that in his testimony, I believe. But I but I don't I don't have the specific yeah because I date for I you. Mean, you, you walk it up. I don't know if anybody in the chat did. I mean, if you're going to walk it up like that, I think you well, have he didn't. Our... He didn't like what's well, the thing is like, he's like, he's just a guy. You know what I mean? He's just a guy who like did some real fundamental research on a stock. And then it just so happened that like the, the, it, it went viral. Right. Like, yep. like, that, like he's just a, like him being a part of this thing is like a, is like a joke because he's just a guy in his, in, in his house who did some research and, and he made a lot of money on his stock and he's now he's like a cult hero. But anyway, that made a spike that happened right when Keith Gill said he would still own the stock. We watched it happen. We laughed out loud. I didn't sell. And then what happened? And, and, so, then, and then, and then nothing, and then nothing happened. And then that was it. So it's gone straight down since then. Huh? All right. I mean, I just, I don't know what to say about this thing. Ridiculous. Uh, this is not a good day. Uh, no. New low for the move by a wide margin. It's the last time I listened to Luke Jacoby, but yeah, Luke, 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 Luke. Jeez. Uh, I don't know. I even know what to say about this thing. I, I. All right. I guess this is where all it started, right? If you go back here to forty, I mean, I took out the forty-two thirty-two low. Uh, now. Pff, if you want to look at the dailies, folks, you're looking down at 37 is your next daily low. 37 and then 36. But uh, it just seems like it's creeping down there. The thing is now the overhead supply is building and building and building and building here. So it's going to be tough. And now Spencer is part of the overhead supply issue. <laughs> oh, Jim, not for long. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, no, it's no big deal. No, it's, uh, it's so is okay. Well, we can move on from that. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll make a double bottom or I, something. I, I will not be providing 
uh, resistance, resistance in in this stock. I, I'm sorry. You're gonna <laughs> ride it. You're gonna ride it to the bank, right? Uh, okay. okay. Well, what about Palantir here? Uh, looks like it's found a bottom at least for the day. Let's, Let's see not. here. Uh, boy, oh boy, you had this thing's been all over the place, hasn't it? Uh, but man, that area, I, you know, it's whew, it's easier to look at something than to actually, you know, trade it. And there it is. I mean, here's your home. You had this home here, right? For so long, you know, the, the pullback off the high, the consolidation, uh, 24.50 was the low. You're trading at 25. You did have a little bit of a pop. So maybe we see this kind of pattern here. One, you know, this is, this is over one, two, three, four weeks pattern. So the best possible thing would be, for this to do that exact same thing, you know, zig and zag, it makes it makes low. So I think exactly twenty four fifty is going to be the low of the move. Who knows? But what you want to do is you want to see some uh, consolidation here, find some footing, maybe put in two, three, four, five lows in a row, and then go back up. So it was it was rough at earnings. You had the. Um, uh, you had the the lockup expiration. A lot of different factors uh, going with the public uh, 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 C. What is it? Um, CIA is Kenny would Kenny Glick would like yeah, to call. It. Yeah. Uh, what else caught my eye today? Uh, Kraft Heinz breakout. Oh, did it? Did this yep. make a move again? Yep. yep. The, we saw. It. Yep. The, the parent indicator. My dad texts me like, "What's up with Kraft Heinz today?" The parent indicator. Yes, uh, that is a big move for Kraft Heinz. Uh, it had a good move yesterday, right? And then it just it just held. It just got in there. Now this one, I don't know if Wall Street Bets is on this one or not, but uh, you had thirty seven oh two. Wow, it gave you a look at yesterday's close too. Open thirty seven thirteen. 3686. There wouldn't have been much heat buying the close there. You got up to 3922. Well, a two day move here. So nice follow through. Uh, not surprised at that one. Uh, SP's coming in here a little bit. We tried to break in uh, 3920, and now we're breaking down here at 3912. But classic two day move here. And we can go. I know there was not much on the monthlies here. I know this is when. Uh, to see if we can do gleam anything on the monthlies, but sure. uh, you know, uh, boy, I mean, this was a bad month here, got a lot of stock to ch chew through there. Uh, but for, well, maybe, maybe the next day or two, maybe a nice round number like 40 hasn't been there in a long time, so maybe use that as a target or just don't try and pick a top, just move your stop, trail it that's up, it. see where this thing that's goes. Catch up is back. Second day in a row now. We try. It's like we tried to go down, but they won't let it. They won't let the market go down. We are all. We are like basically back to scratch. I mean, not on the Russell. We are. We are going to close in the rate on the Russell. We're down one point four percent in the IWM. But look at the Nasdaq. Look at the Spy. I mean, we're Spy. Right. I mean, we're still down. I mean, yeah, we're, we're down a point. We're down a point. Okay. Give me a uh, I mean, the spoons are down fourteen. I mean, that's about it. <laughs> that's about a sell off here in in, in this market. Uh, but you still got you got the resistance overhead. So we've had a nice uh, range this week. Uh, just think we got to get over that thirty nine thirty uh, tomorrow to get back to those that high. The high was made on Tuesday, all time high thirty nine fifty nine and a quarter. Yeah, uh, Mark, <laughs> that's exactly what I told my dad. Michael Burry took a new stake uh, from the big short, and also he's got a bit of an influencer status now because he was long GameStop like two years ago. So he, he's he's got some pull at the moment. That's exactly what I told my dad. All right, uh, looking at the earnings calendar, got a couple big names tonight. Roku's tonight. I have not looked at that stock all day today. Had a very interesting day yesterday. Uh, okay, quieter today, Roku. Not so much. Um, not, not so much I just want to address uh, trend A. Does the trailing stop move down when the stock does, um, mm. or does it stay put? It just it just stay, depends. It, it, yeah, it, stays it just depends. put. That's the point. <laughs> well, it's uh, what what you want to do with the trailing stop is like the higher the stock goes, the higher you want to move your stop up. So if right. it if it you know if it reverses, but you don't if you have a trailing stop and the stock turns, you don't want to be moving your stop down. What a right. trailing stop exactly. is to is to try and lock in the gains. So the, I just want the, the to... point the point is to set the floor. Yes. The, the trailing stop should never go down. It should only go up 
if the stock rises. That right. way, that way, when it does fall, your stop gets hit. You're you're out. Right. That's the point. It is you don't want to be lowering. I mean, maybe you do want to lower your stop, but then what's the point of having a stop if you're going to just lower it? Um, I'll give you an example, just here, uh, just a real life example. <clears throat> and this was the pre market prep stock of the day, Chevron, after that big move yesterday. Uh, and I was looking at this one, and I just I hope everyone understands this. And if if I if we're repeating stuff that we already did, then just let me know. But this is when Buffett was buying this thing. Okay, October stock would not, he wasn't buying up here. Buffett wasn't buying here. He wasn't buying here. He was buying here in October. He was buying in here in November. I don't know what piece he got off in November. And I don't know why we had this big gap up. Oh, I bet you that was vaccine Monday. I bet you he had the gap up. And then he was accumulating all the way to the end of December. So if you're buying on this day or this, or, you know, if you're buying on this day, then Warren may be selling to you. Now, I don't think Warren is, is doing that, but you have to realize these 13 Fs are activity from over a quarter ago. So if you think you're getting the same price as Warren, you're wrong. Now, when I'm looking at this one, you had that June 8th high mentioned that 103.59. I think this looks, this is some good resistance here, folks. Yesterday's high 96.32. Um, you tried to get there to, did you get there today? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, no, this is the monthly. I'm messing my charts up, folks. I'm sorry. Give me one second here. Um, you couldn't get to that high from yesterday, which is not a great sign. So going back to the trailing stop here, I look at the low yesterday, 94.20, and I look at the low from the day, 94.30. That's what I'd be looking at. If I wanted to protect some gains here in Chevron after the, the move, I kind of, you know, it's not investment advice, but that's the area I'd be looking at. Now, let's say if it blasts up and it, you know, takes out 96.72, it goes to 98 tomorrow, then I might bump it up a little bit more, maybe to the closing price uh, um, from yesterday at 95.92. So that's that's what I'm looking at, trailing stop, CVX, next stock, please. I hope that helped you guys out a little bit. <laughs> next stock, please. All right. Uh, I mentioned Roku. Quarter day today. They have earnings after the close. Ernie, yeah. uh, Roku, the Trade Desk, and Dropbox are the top oh my three Lord. on my on my radar. Hmm. You had so, someone wanted out yesterday. I mean, there was just no doubt someone wanted out, and they weren't a very careful seller, and they tagged the stock yesterday. Now, what that did is it it you know dragged people down that were like oh man this is going to be a great report i'm selling my stock at 500 so <laughs> that price action from yesterday had people adjust their thoughts for today uh i keep an eye well, let's go wide here 436 that was the low from yesterday and then 48672 uh that was the old time high uh old time closing high and this is kind of important too uh, six four sixty nine seventy and four. That's the all time closing high, but I see another close at sixty eight sixty seven. So if you get a pop on this, my first area of interest would be four sixty nine. If it really gets carried away, four eighty six seventy two. Uh, and then I mentioned uh, the trade desk and Dropbox as being the other two. Okay. That trade list. desk, not good on uh, high price stocks like this, but. If you get a rip here, got a bunch of highs in this area. Uh, so the first place that you would want to see is it's, uh, 378. That's not far away. Boy, that really, that's really capped the rallies for several days in a row. That's 25 points away. If you can bust through there, yeah, things open up. Uh, but that area looks good to me. And if I was playing this one, Kind of close to the belt, kind of hard to do in a stock like this. I'd be a little concerned. I'd give it a little bit under that low from yes, uh, yesterday. Uh, but, man, if they start cranking this thing, 808.70 area. Uh, actually, it comes in at 806.40 is uh, the low that I'm looking at. So go wide in that one. Uh, tough to trade. $900 stock, I think, uh, whatchamacallit, um, Ryan Craver gave us this thing. I don't even know how long ago. Uh what I wish, wish listen to them on that one. And then Dropbox, that's a perennial disappointing stock, isn't it? Yes. Ah, yeah, they haven't done great off reports, but it's battled back nicely. Is this, 
Is this an all-time high or not? No, I bet you it's not. The stock's been higher. Uh, monthly. Oh, yeah, the stock. Ooh, 25. Let's see if it can bust through there. And then, you know, things open up. Um, on the downside, let's go back to the daily. Tough chart. Uh, if they really whack this thing, this kind of reminds me of Palantir at uh, 25. This reminds this $22 area. Uh, that's what that is similar to. If they start to slam, drop box. 357. Let's do some quick ticker time in the chat. Any questions, any tickers, drop them in. We'll have Joel take a look for a few seconds. As I saw head. the House of Mouse. Yeah, I saw Disney I saw too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy, that hey, thing! Did, did, you, did you see that they're launching a, um, uh, uh, a what is it? A network for for adults uh, for like adult Spencer. entertainment. That's Spencer. what they, that's what it said. That's what it said. Spencer. Adult entertainment at Disney. Well, not not. I don't even that, want to go there. Not in that way. I don't want to go there. I'm saying like want... you don't even you're not listening. I'm saying like <laughs> HBO is what I'm saying. Like <laughs> HBO. Oh, okay. Ah. Uh, Boy, the worm has turned on this thing since earnings day. Look at this thing. I don't know. You are finding some support. You hit 82.16 yesterday. Uh, 82.84 is a low today, but you're kind of bearing down on that. I don't know. I don't like this chart. Uh, I'd really think 182. I, you'd have to think if you cut that out because it had that ridiculous pre-earnings run. And you're not even close to coming out. Uh, uh, back to half of that. I mean, this was just to sell the news. They bought it into the report, and then they just sold the daylights out of it. So halfway back here, it takes you down to this low at 177. But uh, sure, like things have turned here off earnings, and you know, similar like the Apple chart. I mean, that thing's ran into earnings. Boom, ended up having a green, green candle today, but still down a buck eleven. All right, we'll do one more. We'll do uh, Fubo. I've been looking at Fubo for a few days. Fubo. How's good old Fubo doing? I bet you had to come in a little bit. Trying huh? to get the trying to get the CEO of Fubo on pre market prep. Uh, I'm working on that one. Well, the good news is you're finding a bunch of lows in the same area. The bad news is you're closing right there, and uh, so it's still I don't know. Kind of looks like this wants to come down and spend a little time at forty. Uh, S and P's week into the close. We tried to rally. This is not a bad day. It's not a great day. Uh, market struggling a little bit. I think we got some overhead supply, and uh, we'll see what happens overnight. That's a closing bell. That means we made it, guys.